There's an NRA news commentator named Billy Johnson that released a video this week on YouTube titled, Everyone Gets a Gun! So his argument is rather self-explanatory. Uh, but we'll go ahead and dive into the nuance of his argument, if there is any. He says, quote, As a country, we have an education policy. Imagine if that policy was about limiting who has access to public education. I mean, let's be honest, the danger in educating people uh, to think is that they might actually start to think for themselves. Perhaps we should think seriously about who we give access to knowledge. They could use it to do a lot of damage. Oh, I see what he's doing. Do you guys see what he's doing there? Uh, what he's doing is he's comparing education to guns. Because uh, my knowledge, uh, of course, my knowledge of Robespierre and the War of 1812 killed 39 people in Chicago last month. Yeah, that's right. Uh, no, it didn't. Oh, that's right. That would be what we call a stupid comparison. Hmm. So he says, quote, We don't have a U.S. gun policy. We have a U.S. anti-gun policy. Oh! Oh, that's quotable! That's quotable! Somebody, did somebody write that down? And put it on fucking wiki quote with his name? I'm sure that's what he's waiting for you to do. There's only one problem with it. It's wrong. So, for example... Uh, there's no universal background check in America. Of course, the gun show loophole makes it so that 40% of the guns sold in the United States of America have no check associated with them whatsoever. You can still buy guns legally if you're on the terrorist watch list. The terrorist watch list. The terrorist watch list. I have to say it again, because even I'm surprised when I fucking hear it. Uh, and, of course... Some states allow guns in church and in bars while you're drunk off your ass on Jose Cuervo or whatever your drink of choice happens to be. So it seems to me like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay. I love people who think they're nailing it and they're being clever. It's like, we don't have a U.S. gun policy. We have a U.S. anti-gun policy. <laughs> God, I'm so witty. I'm so witty. Yes, yes. Well, if you bother to read the news and learn the facts about gun policy in the U.S., it's impossible to come to that conclusion. He's not done yet. He continues, quote, Gun policy driven by people's need for guns would seek to encourage people to keep and bear arms at all times. Maybe it would even reward those who do so. What if instead of gun-free zones... We had gun-required zones. Just like we teach children reading and writing necessary skills, we should teach shooting and firearm competency. It wouldn't matter if a child's parents weren't good at it. We'd find them a mentor. It wouldn't matter if they didn't want to learn. We would make it necessary to advance to the next grade. What a fucking winner, winner, chicken dinner we got here, huh? This guy's IQ is up there. Arm kids, arm children in elementary school and mandate that they're good with them to get to the next grade. <laughs> and finally, he argues, subsidize guns. Subsidize them. Quote, I mean, perhaps we would have government ranges where you could shoot for free or a yearly allotment of free ammunition. Gun policy driven by our need for guns would protect equal access to guns, just like we protect equal access to voting and due process and free speech. So, let me get this straight. These conservatives that are part of the NRA, the small government people want our tax dollars to fund little Timothy, who hasn't grown any pubes yet, getting an AR-15. Can these guys get any crazier? Can they get any crazier? First of all, they like to think that they're, Oh, we believe in the Constitution. That's what we believe in. We're just standing up for our rights. They have no fucking clue what the Second Amendment is actually about. They can't tell you what it's actually about. Do they know it's about a well-regulated militia? Are you in a militia? Let me see your card. Are you, are you in a militia? 
Oh, that's interesting. Then, according to the Constitution, you don't have a right to have a gun if you're not in a militia. Okay? Uh, and the word regulated is right in there. And what's their argument? They say, no, 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 you're not allowed to regulate guns. You can't regulate them. Really? Then why do the founders put the word regulated right in there? And then not to mention, at the time, what were we dealing with? They had fucking muskets. It took 17 and a half minutes to reload. And they had to deal with uh, Native Americans, the British, and bears. Do we live in the same world today? No, you have to worry about Google and Starbucks today. I mean, who are we kidding? They try to pretend like they're constitutional scholars. They're not. You know who actually does know a pretty good deal about the Constitution? That would be me. And I'm not just saying that to be a smug asshole, although I might be that too. But this is actually, I studied the Constitution because I have my degree in political science. So when I tell you the actual history of the Second Amendment, I know what I'm talking about. It's not about, oh, last line of defense against tyranny, you gotta have guns, you gotta have the same guns as them, for Christ's sake. Right, because then what would every person have the right to have? You could have chemical weapons, you could have biological weapons, you could have rocket launchers, you could have a grenade launcher, you could have a tank, you could have uh, a fucking helicopter, you can have an F-35, you could have nuclear weapons if you want to have all the same uh, guns as them. But of course, that's not what the Second Amendment is about. It has nothing to do with last line of defense against tyranny. That whole idea was made up later on. It's flat out made up, flat out made up. The real history of the Second Amendment, it has to do with standing armies, which means when uh, the soldiers come home from war, the founders were afraid, well, that would lead to, you, you don't want armed soldiers being together here at home. So they mandated by law, well, they need to disband. The army can't be together while they're here because that overthrows... Uh, governments all the time, historically. So they're forced to disband, and then when they disband, they're allowed to have their guns, okay? So that's one thing it was about. The other thing it was about? Preserving slave patrols in Virginia. See, Virginia, they were uh, slow to uh, want to join the Union. They didn't want to actually join the United States of America. So they needed to f come up with a very clever, unique way of allowing uh, Virginia to get into the Union or to entice them to join the Union. So what were they afraid of in Virginia? Why didn't they want to join? Well, they're a majority slave state. They were a majority slave state at the time. So they thought, well, the second we become part of the U.S., all the slaves are just going to escape north. So what happened? They say, well, look, we're going to allow you to form militias and be armed and patrol the border so the slaves can't escape north, you can stop them. Those are the well-regulated militias they're referring to that have the right to guns to stop the slaves from escaping. So the Second Amendment is actually about uh, slave patrols. But these idiots are like, no, we're going to interpret it to mean that fucking little Timmy today, who doesn't have any fucking pubes, he's allowed to have a gun, and we're going to mandate he gets good with a gun in grade school. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what it was about. And they also, I mean, they don't understand this basic fact, man. You could have whatever opinion you want on how many people should have guns or shouldn't have guns or what your opinions are on what gun laws make sense or don't make sense, but it is a fact of reality based on empirical data and studies. Don't take my word for it. Take Harvard's word for it, okay? They're the ones that actually do the research. They found out more guns equals... More gun violence. I know, radical. We, I mean, we couldn't have guessed that, right? It turns out when there are more guns around, people end up shooting people more often. So their whole idea that more guns equals more peace, that's factually incorrect. Look, even if you look at it from a surface level, the United States has over 300 million guns in circulation. So if they were right, well, the U.S. has more guns than almost any modern nation, so we would be the safest, right? If more guns equals more peace... Well, we have more guns, so shouldn't we be the most peaceful? We're not. We have 32,000 gun deaths on average every year in this country. How many do they have in France? Less than 100. Britain? Less than 100. Even if you account for the change in population size, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we still are way above and beyond them and Japan and Australia and Europe and everywhere, right? So they're just wrong, man. Now look, I'm a moderate on the issue of gun rights. I think if you're not a fucking schizophrenic or manic depressive or, uh, you know, whatever severe mental problem or suspected terrorist or a former three-time felon or whatever, you have a right to have a gun, in my opinion. You should be allowed to have it if you're, you know, a, a law-abiding normal member of society. But I don't want children in grade school to have them. More guns does not equal more peace. It equals more gun violence. That's a fact. Get it through your head. These people don't even realize it. But if we adopted their policies, we would have even more gun deaths. But who knows? Maybe that's what they want.